Okay, I hope this is working. Is this, is this better at all? I don't even know if the 
this is better at all. If not, hmm. if not, we'll just do a quiet stream because, okay, <laughs> lower the music volume. Okay, we'll just do what we can. Uh, there was an update, and when updates happen, bad things happen. And, uh, oh well. Okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, it's always something. Okay, so since you didn't hear any of that, um, I'm using some black for now. I'm using golden open paints. Now I'm gonna be painting the landscape, the canyon, uh, in preparation for my acrylic painting course that I'm gonna be teaching at the studio. And let's use a little bit of this yellow ochre. I did order some uh, acrylic landscape, some landscape uh, paints from golden open, the landscape set but it's still on the way so until then I'm just gonna be using what I have and I have a little bit of the cadmium yellow medium right <laughs> yeah I know I turned the music way down but uh, you know we do what we have to do right so that's okay I'll have to Spend some time with OBS and figure out what I why I can't get the camera, the face cam. Uh, I didn't want to load, so I was struggling with that for a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna be starting by just making a quick sketch onto onto my painting, onto the canvas, to just kind of give me an idea <coughs> of where everything is. Getting a better paintbrush. Okay, I'm just grabbing a little bit of white, a little bit of that phthalo blue. So I'm using the phthalo blue for the sky. But I'm just gonna be sketching with that really quickly. So trying to get an idea of the landscape proportions. I'm always striving for a little bit of asymmetrical look in the landscapes. To give the, the landscape a little bit of movement to keep it from being boring. Like Lewis was saying yesterday, how he didn't want everything to be straight. It's nicer if there's some flow in the in the piece. And probably this is what makes good ph photography as well. Okay, then let's sketch a little bit of the the foreground. And I'm going to grab <clears throat> some ultramarine blue. Well, the ultramarine blue is from Arteza, it's not from Golden Open because I didn't have that. A little bit of ultramarine blue, just a touch of the alizarin crimson. That makes a pretty nice kind of a violet bruise color and that's what that foreground is going to be like. It has a lot of atmosphere. It's pretty dark, but strangely, maybe I'll add just a touch of black and white to tone it down just a bit. 
not too much there's surprisingly a lot of color in the distance <clears throat> a bit more white I kind of forgot to put the the reference photo in the pa my Patreon. Generally, I do that so you guys can have it, but maybe I'll put it afterwards. And then we have a little bit of the red. I'm not even cleaning my brush in, in between, just dipping in a little bit of water. Grabbing some Pirole red, a little bit of that yellow ochre to make a really nice brick brick color my paintbrush is still dirty from the previous color so you kind of like this the foreground is pretty flat it's pretty good if you have a little bit of a handshake tremor <laughs> it gives the scene more interest all right well that's good for just sketching it in real quickly and then i'm gonna grab a slightly larger brush i don't know it's still pretty, pretty small <laughs> of a weird day today I don't know <laughs> weird day today grabbing some of the phthalo blue from golden open grabbing a little bit of white so I'm mixing those up the sky is lighter on the top left than it is on the top right and it's got a really nice flow to it Colors are very nice and saturated. What are you up to today, Jamie? Doing anything fun? Are your kiddos in school or do they have the four day weekend for Labor Day? My daughter's got a four day weekend. Pretty exciting for her. <laughs> We're going camping this evening. That's fun. Where are you going? Somewhere close? Are you going with friends? That's, that's nice. A three-day weekend. Yeah, it's still good. Going to the family hunting cabin. Oh, that's fun. I think. <laughs> With family. Fun and interesting. So starting to add a little bit of white for those wispy clouds in there. Pretty nice clouds. Just going close to the blue to soften. Should be fun. We all did a great. That's that's really good. That is fun. Kind of catching the last of the warm weather before it starts. Well, no, actually, we still should have some nice weather until right before October 
Halloween hit. <laughs> That's when, like, right a week before Halloween, it's still nice and warm. And then all of a sudden, you make plans for your, your cool Halloween costume and then Halloween hits and it's freezing. At least that's how it happens around here. Hey, Clara. Oh, are the dogs biting someone or her dog? Oh, gosh. How old are the dogs? How are you doing, Clara? Just creating a bit of these clouds in here. I gotta say, painting clouds with these paints is amazingly easier and better than with the regular acrylics. The regular acrylics, they just dry so fast. They don't give you the chance to make the wispy, wispy shapes. Yeah, it's called right before Halloween. <laughs> yeah, a couple of years old. Mm. At that age, it's difficult to, to get the aggression out. Mm. I got a really nice, uh, I'm drinking my favorite tea, my uh, positive energy. And it's got a really nice quote today. It says, the unknown is where all outcomes are possible. Enter it with grace. Okay, <laughs> I believe you. <clears throat> oh, I don't like aggressive dogs. Aggressive anything is very burdensome. Try to get a bit of a nicer brush here. Maybe, maybe this is a little softer. It's got softer bristles. Let's try that. Okay, as we approach the upper right corner, it gets a little bit darker and there's just a touch of gray in there, a touch of black, but also white. So I'm trying not to darken it too much. I love my tea quotes too, some of them. Uh, I also know you love me too, so it's okay. It's a little Freudian slip there. <laughs> I love you. Tea quotes, I mean. <laughs> wonder where Quelder is. I, we haven't seen him in a little while, right? I should have... Wetted, wetted my brush. It's very dry. There we go. <laughs> I knew it. They love me. They really love me. <laughs> His class was supposed to start back up. Ah, Qualder's class. Maybe he's just busy with that and work. Yeah. Trying to get a little lighter as we get to the bottom. Getting more white. The challenge with this is that I said that uh, I'll teach you how to paint realistic landscapes. And uh, while I am 
pretty good at painting landscapes. You know, I don't know about <laughs> realistic that, that well. I mean, I always try to. So now I have to challenge myself as always with these classes, it's always a challenge. That's why I have to paint them before so that I'm sure that <clears throat> I know how to teach them. As soon as we kind of cover the canvas with the paints, then we can go and refine these clouds and add more wisps with the smaller brushes. Yeah, I have to, <laughs> otherwise I get very anxious and then I, I, you know, have a mental breakdown. Even if it's not exactly, you know, as like the picture, it's still relatively similar might be even better than the picture. Here's some light. Let me grab a smaller brush. This is a nice brush that I got from one of those uh, subscription boxes. It's a Princeton number four select round. I generally save those for fancy watercolors, but I haven't really been doing watercolors lately, so it's okay. Sacrifice yourself for the acrylic good. Trying to leave uh, more amount of paint down here and not to blend too much because if you blend then you lose you lose all the definition. It just it comes one big puddle. So in that respect, I think this is a great preparation for oil paints to these acrylic paints. But without the necessity of the, the solvents or the smell. Although, to be honest, I have used some of the water soluble oils and I actually like the smell. <laughs> I actually like the smell. Just lightening the horizon a little bit over here. some wisps. It's a heavy work day. That's all right, Clara. Take your time. It's okay. I can feel your presence here anyway. I may not be as chatty either. Maybe I'm <clears throat> I'm gonna turn the music up a bit. <laughs> well, I'll say, I'll talk through my, my process here. I 
There's something very satisfying about a, a cloudy sky with the clouds having a very nice composition to them though. This one is kind of like a, a wing up here. really cool that how nicely you can blend the edges unacceptable <laughs> I'm just trying to look from the distance a little bit straight on I don't want it to be completely blended. I still want there to be some contrast, you know, because if there's no contrast, then you kind of, everything is soft and blobby. So I don't want it to be kind of losing its definition, but. I do have the reference code in front of me on the laptop. Just grabbing some very light blue, it's almost it's actually mostly white but as I put it down it mixes with the blue that's there just lightens it up in a very soft way Because the horizon is always lighter on the top of the sky. Rules of landscaping painting. It's heavily white here in <clears throat> the bottom right corner. Much, much cloud inch cloudage. I don't know, it looks to me like it's got a just a little hint of red, like just the tiniest little hint of a lizard and crimson. I'm gonna put it in there to give it a little bit of a little bit of color very very subtle let's see if it shows up it's just very little bit red it's a bit too red
definition in this class. Just kind of putting the paint down and leaving it alone. All right, let me get some bluish paint. And make some wispy clouds over here. Just kind of blending them in. It's a very busy sky over here, but it looks pretty nice. Let's blend it a little bit just to see here and there making the shapes a little less round we all just use the big paintbrush going with some of that blue softening everything some things here and there bit more blue in there. Getting a little bit more blue as we get to the right side. Maybe getting those wispy definitions a little bit more in there. more blue and just a touch of black in that blue oh, right up here pretty good. I think it's gonna look even better with the proper cerulean blue paint that I'll be getting from their landscape kit. I should have probably put that in the description. Maybe if I <coughs> don't forget I'll put that after the stream. But I gotta say I am hooked on these paints. I know I talk about them every time, every single time, it's because I don't think I'm ever going back to the regular <laughs> acrylic paints. Your washing machine spinning out is suspicious. <laughs> How is it suspicious? Who says that? Then let's get into the upper part of the 
canyon. And I'm just gonna block in um, the colors first. So for the for the shadows of that canyon, I'm gonna be using some ultramarine blue. Let me show you my my palette briefly here before I start. Hang on. Okay, I've got some ultramarine blue there. This is from um, Arteza because I didn't have the it from Golden Open. I'll get it. Ultramarine blue or Elizabeth Crimson. I have some Pirol red here. Some um, ochre, yellow ochre right there. And then some cat yellow and black. And then here I have the phthalo blue that I used for the sky. And then I have white, of course. So... Um, the golden open, yes. They're all golden open except for the ultramarine blue because I didn't have that. <laughs> But uh, I did get the golden open. And one of the dogs got worked up when it started spinning out. Ah. <laughs> yeah, they don't like vacuums. <laughs> so, ultramarine blue, I'll mix that with a little bit of the uh, alizarin crimson. But it's mostly ultramarine blue. It's a very, very dark, very dark color. Let me... Um, this is very dark, so I'm going to mix it with some white because the atmospheric effect, it's still, it's got to look as if it's in the distance. So when you mix, when I mix uh, the golden open with the Arteza paints, the Arteza paints will become uh, less, uh, more slow to dry. So let me add some more. I lightened it too much. More ultramarine blue. Still working on the shadow. Maybe I'll just grab a touch of black because it's still got to be not super saturated. And I'll also add a touch of the phthalo blue. Yellow blue is very strong, very strong blue. Okay, let's see how this color is pretty dark. I'm gonna change brushes or just clean it. Trying to get that right color. Okay, now let's put some shadows in here. More white. going to refine these colors so I'm not really worried too much about about the darkness because they're gonna get refined a lot more So this is basically the shadow color right in the creases, which I guess I could have started with that, but I meant to say I could have started with the highlight.
going to glaze my eyes. Oh, thank you, Clara. Glad you like the sky. It's so easy to, to blend with these paints. I'm not a, like a sky expert, you know, I'm not, I haven't been doing a whole lot of clouds, but whenever I do clouds, I find it really difficult because it's difficult to blend them and to make them look realistic and soft, you know, like especially these kind of cirrus clouds. Generally, I used to make, you know, the cum cumulonimbus ones and the, the bigger, fatter ones because those are easier to kind of build up as a shape but these um, these really wispy ones are a little difficult to do with you know, you know regular acrylic paints I think with these paints it's a lot easier I think this should be a little more this way. Alright, let's put in uh, the lighter parts and then we're going to refine the dark ones too. I'm going to use this nice, fat, uh, round brush. Um, so let's use some red, Pirole red. Using some of that beautiful, beautiful Pirole red. And a little bit of crimson. And hmm, what, am I, what my computer wanted. Okay, so I have like a grayish color. Let me just add just a touch of um, touch of ochre in there too. Okay, uh, let's see. We'll refine it. We'll add more highlights to this too. I need to be more white, lighter. Later, later. more red and more white brighten it up a little bit clouds are not easy <laughs> yeah they do well there's so many types of clouds you know that you can uh some are easier to do than others so you can definitely go for some easier clouds to begin with <clears throat> the big fluffy ones i think they're easier because you know they have a shape and you stay within that shape but these uh, some clouds are a little more difficult because they're so chaotic and i think it's more difficult to create something that's so so you know chaotic and eclectic <laughs> you think they're bigger harder <sighs> ah rocks in the sky i don't know maybe well i'll definitely have more clouds to paint in this course so well, I'll probably paint these during the live streams as well 
All right, let me mute my phone. I thought this would end, but it looks like it's ongoing conversation. similar colors pretty similar colors just and we're gonna go with different colors too because I took this picture when I painted that picture um, in the sunrise in the Amazon with the reflections that was actually really difficult it had clouds but it had such it was that uh, morning sunrise clouds and there were so many colors in there and it wasn't just blue and white. I think blue and white clouds are pretty easy, but then when you start adding a sunrise or a sunset and you start adding red and yellows in there, I think that's when it gets pretty tricky because the transition between the clouds to the sky and the transparency of the clouds on, on the sky, you can really mix that as a, as a color you, you can mix the two colors. You have to add another color to compensate generally red. Why did I leave that space there? I don't know why I left that space there. You see? Hmm. Interesting. Let's just do this or figure it out. Pretty straight. Do I prefer painting landscapes or people and animals? Honestly, I don't, uh, neither. <laughs> to be honest, neither. Uh, I pre well, I prefer painting landscapes over people and animals. Over people. Animals can be fun. People, I don't know. I just am not that interested in people, I guess. Or uh, <laughs> I prefer painting landscapes because, in my opinion, they're easier. They're, um, there's so many more kinds of landscapes that you can do for example you know like you can do mountains and forests and underwater and caves and uh you know night skies i love painting night skies you know with planets and, and the cosmos and stuff like that i like that kind of stuff i also like doing sacred geometry like i gotta go back to my roots is what i have to do because i'm kind of feeling I'm, I'm very appreciative of having jobs and, uh, you know, projects, commissions and stuff like that. But, and they are fulfilling in a way, some of them are, and some of them are just kind of like, I just do the job, you know, and get paid and that's very rewarding. But on the other hand, painters go into painting in order to express themselves and to get something out and I think I've kind of veered away from that when I started doing it as a job <laughs> when I started painting I was doing what was I doing kind of I think more abstract <clears throat> things I would do like this uh, disengaged like just eyes or or body parts or uh, you know something that would create a feeling or symbolism basically symbolic paintings but now these are I'm not complaining at all you know 
but I do feel like I need to get back to my my love as soon as I find what that is because I kind of forgot to be honest okay I'm getting some crimson and ultramarine blue to get a more purplish kind of tone for down here but I need to lighten it up a little bit because down here is more like a violet magenta e color and I hope that I can do that with the ultramarine and the crimson it's pretty violet bit dark but it's okay what do you well i know you like to paint people i'm not big into people to be honest you know i just never got into it and maybe that's what's holding me back maybe i do want to paint people in order to express my my feelings maybe because i don't do that have not learned and I can't express what I want all right let's figure out what's over there let's Before I started taking commission, I would um, the landscapes that I painted were well, not landscapes. The paintings on acrylic uh, on canvas that I used to do for myself were those sacred geometry. You know, I also really like doing the the gemstone art with the resin. I like doing those. So not necessarily more of an abstract. I think. But still, I do like the re realism when I do the, the landscapes. I am striving for a realistic effect. Striving is the key word here. It doesn't mean I al always get it. too bad let me just make sure oh was i out of focus the whole time i hope not
smaller brush. Oh, trusty, trusty Princeton. Am I participating in October? Uh, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I have not. I have not even considered it yet. I think I'll be way too busy with painting the mural. And to be honest, I think I'll be exhausted at the end of the day. I'll be having, you know, the mural painting and then some days I'm teaching class. So unless, unless it's gonna be like a weekend thing, I don't see it as being something that I can be confident in in undertaking <laughs> are you doing it i've got a pesky fly around here are you gonna do inktober or something else yeah it's i don't want to put too much on myself There we go, and then let's put some some of the redder parts. I need to remix my red. Grab some more white. Okay, so this is basically just pure red and a little bit of gray. Let's see what it looks like. A little bit red. Some parts I'm probably gonna add a little bit of orange to it. Violet over there, the alizarin and the ultramarine. Let me grab some more red. I mean white. I'll just grab some gray for now. Actually, alizarin and ultramarine blue makes a pretty natural looking violet color. Violent color. I need to move this over a little bit. You're in Italy for half of it, but planning on just working ahead. Yeah, making them from doodles than finished pieces. Making more doodles than finished pieces. <laughs> yeah, I get that. All right, so. Let's add a little bit of, of detail now. Meow. Meow. Let's grab some more crimson and ultramarine blue. I'm making some highlights for the shadows. I'm gonna put some 
color in the shadow so I'm using that shadow color I'm adding some crimson to it and then a touch of white or even this very light gray that I already have on my palette I think I over lit it putting more ultramarine okay let's see how this looks under putting some rocks in there it's basically just dropping in some rocks in the shadow while leaving some of that dark in there as the creases where the, sh where the rock uh, wraps wraps around in the crevasse Maybe I could add just a touch of white. Add it just a touch to lighten it up a little bit. <clears throat> I'll add more details in the rocks. For now, I'm just putting the shapes in there. Even dropping some deep shadows in here too. Trying to squint and very complex shapes in here I don't know why I picked this <laughs> I always make it so difficult for myself and others like yeah sure anyone can paint <laughs> while well, that is true it takes a lot of a lot of dedication
some shadows in here. Let me grab some of the darker in the shadow color. I'm gonna redefine some things here. Maybe the first the first session will be the clouds and this portion and then the next class. I plan to teach these over two classes, two classes that last for two hours. So I'm thinking every landscape hopefully will get done in in four hours. And I have four landscapes prepared. This is the the one about depth that teaches depth and and basically rocks and composition and then you know I'll be having a one that is a night sky and then hey Lewis hello and then I'll be doing a night sky and some uh, reflections of a lake. And then I'll be doing, what else? I have a forest stream. And then the last one is uh, like a meadow with, with fluffy clouds. Thank you so much, Louis. And then I'll have fluffy clouds and uh, a meadow with, you know, grass and flowers. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes and how much progress we'll be able to make. We might have even time for, for more, but I don't know. Now I'm going in back into the, the creases of these rocks, doing a little more definition on the shadows. How you doing, Louis? What you working on? really dark by the by this rock so darkening that area there and then I mean proportionally it's not exactly like the picture and I guess that's okay because it's gotta be <laughs> it's gotta be okay Doing great, going through film to decide what to clip. Ah, great. What do you, what uh, film are you going? Are you working on now? It's good that you have footage. I'm still working on the video for the the dandelion wall. I'm just dragging my behind on that. 
It's not like I don't have any other stuff to do in other projects, but the truth is I am procrastinating a little bit. I'm dropping this cliff down a little bit. I feel like it's too high. You lighten it up. a lot of stuff past streams landscape painting a spoof inspirational vid nice very good i have a lot of <laughs> footage too and i have stuff to finish the project so just it's good to have stuff so that's what it's all about having stuff let me add a touch of black to that to darken it. Right in there. Thankfully, uh, the, the three students that signed up to this class are, are kind of like vet veterans. They've been to my other classes, so they kind of know the, the drill. They know their spiel, most of it. So they're gonna work on, they're gonna build on their previous experience. So it's always amazing. And then if I have any noobs, noobs, and that's gonna be a little interesting, but it's okay. I think that, well, they're just gonna have to have patience, you know? Like, and if you don't, you lose. I gotta be honest, sometimes they paint better than I do. It's a little disconcerting. Okay, I have this one, then I have this one here. And then... and then this just mixing some more crimson and ultramarine blue for the highlight no actually I don't need to mix that and Using another color for the highlight. Let me grab a smaller round brush. I think I'm gonna use a liner. Yeah, let's use a liner. A red. I'm using the little light 
red for the highlights. And this is that one. And eventually you're gonna add some white, some lighter colors up there. <sighs> I'd love to take one of your classes, maybe one day. I am going to try and I'm not gonna say it because if I say it I'm not gonna do it but I'll try to make it work for people who can't come in person I, I said this for a while and I kept not doing it so I'm just not gonna say it anymore it feels like I'm self-sabotaging myself that's not redundant enough But, uh, yeah, maybe one day, like I said. Somebody asked me if <laughs> in person, where is school Darius? Um, well, I was asking that too. He might be busy, obviously. I'll make the track one day. That would be fun. I should probably visit Atlanta at some point too. Who knows, maybe if I get uh, a mural, a mural um, commission, then maybe I'll come by and do a class over there. <laughs> nice poles for sure. Awesome. Well, whenever you're around here, Clara, you're welcome to come and you have a place to sleep. <laughs> and, uh, well, let's just be sure you're probably going to sleep on a blow up mattress, but your, your, uh, your work is probably going to provide a ni much nicer hotel than I can provide. But I would love to have you in class, even just one class you can come. I thought they were fun, very engaging. And that's what that's what Twitch wants. It wants that engagement like the McDonald's Szechuan sauce. <laughs> okay, then I'm coming straight trying to see this. Uh Trying to see this landscape for what it truly is. It's, uh, <laughs> Create content and improve engagement, rinse and repeat. <laughs> I just rinse once. <laughs> it's it's a lather, rinse, repeat as needed. Excuse me and thank you very much. 
and if you can even sing it in Phoebe's voice, that would be even better. <laughs> you get a rash. <clears throat> you made the video on Instagram. <laughs> Do you like sandwiches? We ended up getting like 17,000 views. Wow, that's awesome, Clara. That's really cool. Is this recent? solo effort yeah I know what you mean I know what you mean Clara uh, that's people just interested shallow shallow people you know that's people for you not this group of course this group is the most wholesome group of individuals you got 2.1 million <laughs> on Instagram. Oh man. Wow. It's at 18,000. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, how did that happen, Lewis? Rose made me do one of those trending memes. Uh, then she got jealous and stopped helping me. <laughs> well, she's just uh, letting you grow your own feet, I guess, the hard way. It's called tough love. Go to my IG reels and check it out. Got the wrong audience, so whenever I post, I lose 50. <laughs> You're a victim of pop culture, of culture canceling, cancel culture. <laughs> it's like every time I look at this mountain, it looks differently. It's, what am I doing? If you lose them over something like that. <laughs> no. 
she will not be quieted. You know we're very strong women over here, Louis. You're a little bit in the, uh, what do you call it, minority. Unfortunately for you. <laughs> and when was your your popular meme Louis when did that happen because I didn't see it I mean I haven't been on Instagram in a while because I haven't posted anything, so I don't have any reason to go. <laughs> oh. Generally. <sighs> yeah, exactly. They just want to be entertained. It took five minutes to do it and it built my account. Wow. Well. I want to say I want to do that, but do I want to do that? Do I really want to do that? Okay, let's add some of that yellow, yellowish part on the top. It's more yellow with the pearl red and more white, which I'll just grab some gray. Now I'm definitely going to need more white. I just got some white right now. Big tub of white. Oh, oh, my back hurts. Ouch. Did you hear that cracking? <laughs> I heard the cracking. Okay. Let's add some brighter highlights to these suffers. <sighs> the suckle upon. That sounds, honestly, Louis, <laughs> just sounds wrong. You received a Korean tea tray. Aww. That's so sweet. <laughs> You're an art hippie. I think she is an art hippie, not like an art hippie. Okay, grabbing, putting some highlights in that right up there. And then there's a layer like this. Here is a genuine layer of lighter. rock I know you mean to to uh you know what I'll just uh start talking when I know for sure the words that I'm gonna say <laughs> um I'm gonna think until then I have this awful thing about words that are not coming to me when I need them to. I don't I really don't need you to explain the word. I know exactly what it means 
and I know the image that comes into my mind when you say the word suckle. I do not need explanation. Uh-uh. It's kind of like the word Croydon. And crud. Those words are some words that make me very uncomfortable. <laughs> well, yes, I just said them. Doesn't mean that I like them. <laughs> Take notes, Lewis. I may or may not speak. I'm just thinking for now. Speaking may or may come, may not come in the future. There is a specific word that I'm trying to remember and and then when it comes it's gonna be such a banal word that you're gonna be like oh my god I had that in my vocabulary <laughs> you still haven't had your art ceremony <laughs> uh, yes I'm listening Evoke! That's the word! <laughs> I was gonna say that uh, the image that is evoked by the word suckle, especially when you say it, Louis, is not a, what you might call, you know, a, a wholesome image. So, uh, you can explain as, as you want, but... <sighs> Hang on, let me just get back to it. Mound. Bulge. <laughs> Extru uh, extrusion? No. Um, protrusion? <laughs> yes. Ignorance is the best punishment for people like Lewis. Mind you, Lewis, I will take your place whenever you are, you are, you know, in the weak zone. But if you want to be in the power, I'm afraid I can't be there for you. You gotta be losing in order for me to be on your side. You understand? I'm always on the losing side. <laughs> Of glorious wisdom that feel mm -hmm. right. Peon. Idiotas. All right. So now we're getting into the even warmer colors right here. So I'm adding more ochre this paint and more white so maybe maybe just a touch of black to kind of uh, take the value down just a notch but still it's in the distance so let's see this glorious color right here it's a bit too yellow it's a bit too yellow and more white <sighs> Corrupted mind. <laughs> you never lose. Come on, Lewis. Then I can never be on your side. You gotta be brave enough.
white cloth that shines with the force of a thousand suns. Mm -hmm. surely, surely you have the gift of storytelling, Lewis. I like that. I like a good story. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Nice. I hope you're writing this down because it's pure gold. Let's, uh, let's add some some highlights to the shadows. Sorry about the noise. Okay, the crimson, the blue, the white. And a touch touch of black and water happen when you're not telling the truth you know it's okay though we forgive you actually I'm gonna put just a touch of red in there to make it more colorful and it that shadow hang on I'm trying to focus because I lost the shadow in there experiencing the difficulty of losing the form while building it up and kind of losing the composition. Oh, it's very Shakespearean, Lewis, your, your narration. Shakespearean genius. Okay, let me just redeem myself over here. I need more blue. We do get confused sometimes, especially when there's too many of you. Well, maybe not too many, just the right amount, right? I sure hope that I'm going to be doing a better job at the class than, than I'm doing right now. <sighs> yes, it's 
It's a good banter. I mean, from the distance, let me see, from the distance, from the distance, I could use some red over there. Lewis. Red too in those highlights and crimson and red and maybe just a touch of blue in there. Okay, let's make some. Oh.
too red. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving to the following layers. Crimson coming over here. I'm just blocking that bigger rock formation in the foreground well in the mid ground so that I can get it out of my way just to know where it goes for this I mix some Perol red and and a yellow ochre I think it could be a little more that way and white on my already dirty brush. Pearl red, yellow ochre, some of the light purple stuff that I had before. Of purple,
we got to oak around that bottom and maybe tone it down with some of my gray, which I'm running out of. Tone it down with some red and white and a touch of black and blue. It's kind of like, a, let's see, more red. I need more red. If you roll red, it's a nice color. But I think it needs more yellow in there. Just a little bit to be a little more burnt. Just blocking it in to start with. that just going across like this but a little with a touch of purple to that a little more unsaturated color And it's a little bit lighter. So now you can see how much struggle there, <laughs> there is in a landscape painting. I mean, I like it and I think it's a lot more relaxing when you kind of do it by yourself and don't try to demonstrate in front of people that always puts a fair amount of pressure on a person uh, but i think i would think i would definitely do a lot better if i wasn't demonstrating it in my own <laughs> in my own defense i'm a lot better when nobody's watching promise you <laughs> but it is true I think performance diminishes when the expectation, when there's a lot of pressure onto the individual. You know, and the, the mistakes always happen and all the, all the adjustments and stuff and the struggle is real. And on the live stream, you can see just how real it is. And it's funny because, um, I mean, not funny. It's not funny. I don't know why people say that. It's not funny at all. <laughs> but uh, when, when I would, for example, tell my students that, yeah, you know, like even teachers make mistakes. And then I always think, well, then what does that teach them? You know, like. I'm teaching you something and I even make mistakes so you are never expected to fully have the confidence and fully know it but it is true it depends though I guess you forget because it's it's a skill you don't remember it and if you don't practice it you forget But you can always get it back with a little practice. Just trying to get the right color for over there. It's redder. Pretty saturated. I 
I'm putting Pirol red into that mixture. Maybe a little bit of purple. It needs to be more alizarin, more purpley. And that's why, that's why I practice it here for everyone to see <laughs> before I show my little group of students. And then there's some redder mounds over here. And this patch of lighter, lighter rocks here. So we're it's one o three. So it's two two hours since starting. Trying to keep track of how long this takes. I'm expecting it to take four hours, but when I teach it, I'm thinking, yeah, it has been two hours. <laughs> Time just flies. Just like this pesky fly in here. I've got a fly very annoying but uh yeah it always takes it's always slower progress over there so if i if i want something to take two hours at the studio i have to be able to build it up in an hour so i should be finishing this in three hours Three hours and a half maybe hopefully if not it's gonna be a three hour project which i really didn't want it to turn into okay i've got some some little pebbles in here in the distance so let me grab some black grab a little bit of the ultramarine blue grab a little bit of white and let's see maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson i need more blue now let's make some rockies over here some rocks Gotta zoom out so I can see it a little better. And this 
this just continues right on over to this right across but the black is much redder so I'm adding some Pyrrole red to that maybe some alizarin crimson to that Make it super dark. So as you can see, I'm kind of working all over the place. I'm mixing that with the lighter gray because I find that is too dark. water it down a bit it's not flowing enough <clears throat> satisfying to, to do all these patterns in the rock pretty cool Then I have to look into. Hey, Louis, the, are you still using OBS? Because today OBS, uh, when I opened it up, it asked me if it wants. It said it has an update available, so it says update. I said okay, and then, uh, and then after I updated it, I couldn't use my Droid Cam for my face, which is the reason why. I'm not showing my face right now and uh, also the the voice was super low when I started the stream which is why I had to lower the music so much so I don't know what's happening have you experienced the update uh... <laughs> right oh Silly me, silly, silly me. <laughs> no, I didn't restart the computer. Right, you're right. Why am I forgetting things like that? That's the problem. Thank you. See, that's why I ask. That's why I ask you. Haven't done this update yet, but they always screw things up. I know, and I'm always worried that something's gonna be a sh issue, a skew, and then. But then, if there's something beneficial, if I don't do the update, and then uh, it doesn't perform because it needed the update. Hmm. Always not knowing what to do. I'm like a silly person. <laughs> I'm using a liner for this. That's why I would be delayed so much, especially before I bought a webcam. Mm, it is frustrating. Oh, 
What what webcam did you get, Louis? Was this recently that you were still using the Canon M50? So I was just gonna get the M50. I was so ready for the update and for the tech update. And then I was looking into it and I don't know what, I, I didn't like, I think the resolution and stuff. And then, uh, and then I was looking into the Canon M6, which seemed like a much better choice. <laughs> uh, so, because Sam said, well, take a look at these webcams. And I was looking at the Sony ZV-1 and I kind of like that one too. And then there was there were another couple of ones that I almost got. And then, then for some reason, I decided to wait. And I still have to, still have to do my tech upgrade. Because I'm not happy with this camera. <laughs> at all. Well, you know, I mean. I'm still using it, so I can't hate it so much, but... I use the M50 as the main camera on my work. Yeah. I'm gonna get some red in there in that shadow needs to be redder maybe they're just a touch lighter Hey Reno from Indonesia. Welcome. <laughs> Hope you're having a good day. Loosening the paint and stabilizing the hand. needed more red it's okay because we can add more red even crimson and we can add some highlights here and there
Elgato face cam 108060. Oh, cool. So you use that for the live stream for just your face or um, or for your painting. Just for your face. I don't know why I cleaned this brush. Probably gonna use another one. Let me add some highlights on that. On that uh, dust in the background. Oh, I need to add some darks first. Just your face. You use the M50 for the painting. Okay, cool. I have to figure something out too. Gotta figure it out. One of the worst feelings, the feeling of not knowing what to do. laying some of this dark shadow color here and there to symbolize some rocks and pebbles and then and also over here Ooh, very dark the same liner brush because it can leave the most precise little highlights just making a highlight color with white and red and ochre and a touch of that purple the very unsaturated purple to just tone it down some highlights in those rocks right there in the distance
And a few dots in there too. Just add a little bit of details. <sighs> Let's see how it looks on the camera. That's okay. Add just some texture to the rest. Everything's got texture. It's all one color. It's kind of boring. And it's not all one color. I have to add all sorts of colors in there. Creating a little bit of terrain over here too. The lay the land, the angles of the brush create the, the way the landscape is tilted on that angle. I need this to be less purple and more warm. So more Pirole red and black. And maybe a touch of yellow ochre. A little better. And this color needs to be redder. And more ochre than it is. Let's see. Mm, that's a lot better. That's more like a burnt sienna sort of color, which is really nice color. Okay, now I need to get the dark, and we're gonna. And the shadow.
little too much black. Use a different brush for this. Just a touch of white. I feel like it's not that dark. move some mountains around is what I need to do so I didn't leave myself enough space for this portion here that's all right We're going to make mud for a little bit. And then we'll figure it out. Need to lighten that up anyway. gosh okay I'm not talking much I'm talking much because um I need to restart <laughs> this this mountain over because it's not going the way I need it to be going it's 
so I need to map out the basic shapes. I think I'm thinking of other things too. I might be tired. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. I need to look at it from a distance is what I need to do. Okay. I need to remix remix some paints. It's okay, because the second time it'll actually look the way I want it to look. I'd rather start over than try to salvage something that is not gonna work. actually put some cad cad yellow in this mixture and it is way too yellow so I need to put the red back in just mixing some colors Tea ceremony now. Oh, thanks, Clara. Uh, I've been struggling a little bit. <laughs> it's a good thing you weren't here for that. Hopefully you weren't here for that. Because I almost had a mental breakdown. <laughs> Very, you know, on the inside. I would never show my weaknesses out loud but they happen they're very very real <laughs> is it really looking good i don't know i'm too up close to it <sighs> You know, you have to have a mental breakdown every now and then, you know, just to remind yourself that uh, you're human and fallible to subject to the vicissitudes of the body. It happens. I was looking at it too up close and then when I started making mistakes, I'm pushing myself. I am pushing myself like for real. I've never painted 
I've never painted a landscape so detailed. In s I mean, I have, just not this. Thank you, Lois. It's good to have support. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> the only reason why I'm freaking out a little bit is because I'll have to teach this to to people who also have never done anything like this but also maybe they're doubting themselves even more than I am doubting myself so that's gonna be interesting but I mean that's why most of them are coming come back it's for for that exact reason they want to learn they want to stretch and grow <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, Jamie. I mean, there's never no doubt. There's never no doubt. There's always a little bit of a doubt, especially when you're doing something new. For the first time in front of people. Yeah, oh yeah, there is. Whenever I go to a, to a when I uh, get a new commission for a painting, I always have like the smallest feeling. Sometimes it's small, sometimes it's not so small. A oh, little feeling of, it's anxiety, you know, it's like a little doubt, a little, a little out a little stress Some of those little rocks there, pebbles. See, I can even use a liner for that. It was probably not recommended <laughs> to do so.
to mix in some more of this color and hope it's gonna be the same. Because I keep running out. Need a few shadows for these rocks in here. Just using the sort of stop and go hand motion in order to make the lines a little less less straight and less even I don't want everything to be even in nature because it's not the darks on the other one they're pretty pretty well defined but let's just go over and unify the colors because I think I used a little bit different colors for the first one here let's make more of these parallel lines fade away as we go to the right, left, the other right. And then we're gonna apply some highlights
this is very weirdly done here. Can add some blue to that red. Rough formations are very tricky. I like rocks though, I do like painting rocks. But these are interesting because they have lines going across them and up and down, and there's just a lot of facets to paint. complex rocks. These rocks are very human-like. All right, let's add a little bit of highlight here and there. Clean my brush. And I'm using a very light peach color for highlights. And then you know what, I'm going to use a smaller brush. Keep going back to my, to my liner. to darken it. Highlights are way too powerful for that. It's a little bit better. And to put the highlights on top of the rocks. And then it's a whole jumbled mess by the entrance of this. I don't know, it really looks like it's some sort of dwelling. It's probably not. Getting some red and ochre and white. I want this to be a little darker though. It's not gonna be the super bright highlights. And now when I refer to red, I mean Pirol red, not not the uh, lizard and crimson. I'm adding more uh, ochre and more white. I want it to be a little brighter.
be yellower. Gotta be redder. I think I'm gonna need more Corolla red. Okay, and that portion there is a little bit lighter, just adding a touch of white to that. <laughs> that gives me all that good tea. As we get close to those weird bulgy uh, mountains over here now we see that we can highlight the appropriate shapes and then it kind of all starts to make sense a little bit Tiny little highlights on the top. Let's see how it looks like. Ah, uh, 
That's all right. Oh, it's starting to look good. I am loving the the sky though. The sky looks nice. All right. Oh, well, we're making progress then. <laughs> Let's just do the foreground and call it call it a day cuz this is some serious mind work here. Very exhausting mentally. And uh, we all know that the brain consumes the most energy. To be honest, some, some days I'd rather do a workout than have to think. I think I think much better with my muscles than I think with my brain. <laughs> Very sad, really. Sad. We can't change our nature, can we? <laughs> the same way. I'm much more physical than I am mental. I mean, I'm mental, but, but not in a good way. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather work out than think. It's easier to think. I mean, it's, I think it's very difficult to think. It's hard work. Ah, the composition is a... <laughs> You're working on a project for work. I just wish I could be working out. <laughs> yeah. You gotta work out. <laughs> I mean, that's why... That's why I like working out, especially in um, the app that I work out, like in Supernatural, those intense, intense exercises is because the exercises are so fast that they literally, you have no time to think. And so that's, I like that. If you have no time to think and you have no time to worry and you give your mind a break. <clears throat> and we all need that. All right, let's work on the foreground. My gosh, you wanna see my palette? It's such a mess right now. This is my palette. It's a mess. <laughs> I feel like I need to clean it up a little bit. Um, yeah, I think we are... Oh. And it's not just thinking, it's like ruminating and obsessing. It's not like thinking, philosophizing, you know, like really um, productive thinking. It's more like worrying rather than thinking and, and posing uh, what ifs questions like what if this goes wrong and stuff. And uh, that's not good. Okay, so the foreground is much more orange. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna grab some of this beautiful Pyrrol Red and I'm gonna put some Pyrrol Red over here. And then I'm gonna grab some of my yellow ochre. I've got a big bottle because initially I was thinking of my next painting course being uh, introduction in face face painting like fa how to paint a face uh, portrait <laughs> portrait painting so I got myself all these you know portrait skin tones paints and then my friend Amanda was like well maybe maybe you want to really be confident in <laughs> like 
Do you paint many faces? <laughs> I said, no, how confident are you in painting faces? And I said, not at all, not very confident. <laughs> and she said, maybe you can practice that. And maybe you can teach something that you feel a little more confident. Maybe that will take a little pressure off. And I said, Amanda, you're so wise. <laughs> I'm so glad I have you as a friend. So then I uh, I changed my mind about painting faces and I said, okay, maybe I should just paint something that I am more confident, like landscapes. I got this idea when I was on vacation and I it was a really nice uh, woodsy area and there was a creek it was so peaceful and the trees has had such beautiful texture and uh so i thought i think that's what i want to do i want to do like how to paint realistic sceneries okay so i have this kind of orangey i'll show you the color it's this this right here much orangey than everything else and so that I'm going to mix, to mix with white, not all of it, just a bit, just a bit of it. I'm gonna mix with white. Yeah, so I have now, I have yellow ochre and I have burnt umber <laughs> that I'm not gonna be using at the moment, but maybe I'll be using, you know, the the burnt umber for the landscapes and obviously yellow ochre is very useful for landscapes too but i did order myself the the kit i mean the set of landscape colors hopefully that'll be nice and hopefully this color matches kind of foreground is a little bit bigger than than the picture it's okay um, I need more white too yeah we all think more than we should think but sometimes sometimes it's useful you know sometimes your thoughts lead to something productive and that's good and i think if we would think less then we would get more better ideas uh, because usually when do we get ideas when we're like in the shower and and for once just kind of relaxing and not thinking about the the project and that's when ideas come when we don't look at them so i think it would be a good idea to kind of relax every now and then and kind of not think so much not think so much i mean what i mean to say is more trust and know that you don't have to work out every single thing every single time kind of trust that things always work out for you which they always do i always think when i was a kid man i i had this knowledge so ingrained in my in my brain like i would be so confident that everything will always work out just fine never worried you know I mean, it's not like i didn't encounter hardships or drama or you know every everything that everybody encounters but deep inside i knew that i will always be alone like by myself my i will always be my own company that's a better way to put it not alone but i'll never be alone <laughs> which is another way to put it and whatever happens around me i'll always be there to to meet it and whatever happens i'll have to deal with it because that's how that's what we do nowadays bye lewis thank you so much for Thank you so much for hanging out for as long as you did and have a good time with your with your videos. I can't wait. Bye, have a good weekend.
a good weekend. But yeah. So. I think what humans need to understand is that we don't control Jack. Jack. We don't control as much as we think we can control. And that's okay. I mean, the only thing you can control is your own thoughts, right? And your own actions. I mean, your thoughts, not really. You can only acknowledge them and you can direct your thoughts rather. You can choose the thoughts you want to think. And basically you have to train your mind to think the better thoughts. The thoughts, they do come. And sometimes you think that you can't control them, but... You can choose. I'm just rambling now. I'll just stop talking. <laughs> you know what I mean. I mean, we know the th theory. We just need to put into practice. I got too much black on my orange. Trying to make that darker, slightly darker color over here. There we go. I just mix that same orange that I previously I mixed with white. Now I'm mixing it with black and white. Maybe it's a little too much black, but oh well. Should have probably mixed it with red instead of black. Just putting a little bit of red in there. There's too much red.
Now let's add some, what are we doing here? Some rocks. So let's grab a small brush, but not, not the liner brush. We can do this Princeton number four. Now we can just uh, grab some, some of that orange and some brown. Maybe you just add a touch of red in there to kind of maintain a little bit of color. I'm going for like a dark brown. See, I could have probably just used a burnt umber. Oh. Maybe I'll just zoom out and uh, just do the, the gist of what I'm seeing. See, you now it's mixing, it's mixing with the paint. You know what I could try to do? I'll try to do that. That might be fun. I uh, wanna flick, flick some of the some of the paint over. Flicking is what I'm gonna do and hope that it works. Uh, just grab some water and And uh, dilute some of this paint. Dilute the paint with water a fair amount. And then I'm just gonna flick and hope that I'm making some, just like making stars, you know? And because I wanna make those the sand believable it's pretty difficult to to create a realistic impression of sand and rocks with just with a brush you know it takes a lot of coercion so i'm just flicking and look already instant sand it's really cool really cool and then i have to make sure there's nothing uh, behind <laughs> behind the painting that is too precious and just try to do it just on the little area that you're going for otherwise you're gonna get these flecks all over maybe on some things that you don't want but if it goes onto the background that's fine but I am trying to stay isolated to the foreground. And well, that's pretty cool. And then let me see. I think I'm gonna grab some. All right, let me just rinse my finger because these paints are not the friendliest. <laughs> uh, they're not the they're difficult to get off. And it says that some of them are toxic i'll just say toxic because that's what i think it is okay grabbing i just want to make a lighter
color of this. So a more light brown flax. I'm grabbing the orange. I think I made them too too purple. Still mixing, still mixing. Okay. Let's make some more flex. This will be cool. Maybe they'll have some texture. I'm gonna make them lighter. I'm running out of space on my on my palette. Always cover the area you don't want the speckles before you splatter. Yes, you can do that. You can do that too. I'm not gonna do it right now because too much trouble. <laughs> and I I don't think they're gonna go too far. That's definitely, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. It's good for the tiny little ones because really, how are you going to make the, the little tiny specks? Like a paintbrush with a paintbrush it would be grueling. Grueling. There, and now I can go and make the bigger ones with the paintbrush. Place my finger. Okay. Grabbing the paint brush. Yeah, I definitely got my, some specks onto the curtain. Adding some black to this because some of these areas can get a little darker here. Besides, it's uh, foreground is always has the darkest areas.
We are getting somewhere. How long time is it? 2.27, so three and a half hours. Not bad. Not bad. It's about how much I said that it would... I wanted it to take. I'm very close to calling it done. I'm not saying I'm done. I'm saying I'm calling it. Calling it done because I am pretty much done with this for today. Oh, and I'll show you, before I go, I'll show you uh, what else I worked on that uh, eerie, on the eerie uh, forest landscape. I did a little bit of texturing to it. Thank you so much, Jamie. Let me just put some highlights here and there. I just want to put some highlights and then, and then I call it done. But uh, it's coming, it's coming along the, the eerie forest. I'm still not done yet, but I'm very close. I added some spirits with uh, the airbrush and I added some more uh, mist with the airbrush and then uh, I put some of the spackling today, the joint compound, actually yesterday, just to uh, add a little dimension to the foreground tree. And I just put a coat of paint on it today. And then I'm gonna dry brush to add more texture to it. And then I still have to paint the old man from the Led Zeppelin album because the guy wants that on so i'm gonna do that and then i can present him with a finished sketch and then hope that he likes it <laughs> and paint him not sketch Pure white. Did not mean that. This song is called Coffee and Unicorns. I don't think you can hear it though. It's a good song. I should what am I doing I need to speckle the white on using it by brush like a peasant I'm gonna speckle it on Then I call it quits, and then I call it done. <laughs> okay. The trick is for the paint to be super uh, loose, thin, thinned out.
Okay, I have one. Uh, I keep saying last thing, last thing, but cereals, nah. Last thing, I need to add some color into the into the rocks over there. All right, I'm I am done. Um, let me show you. Let me show you the uh, the painting. The other one. So this is. Uh, you see the spirits. And then uh, look at the texture of the tree. I put in with that speckling the the joint compound and the little ghosts that I put in with the airbrush. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with how how it came out. I'm gonna keep working on this. I think it'll be a really cool painting. Overall, very Halloweeny, very Halloweeny. Well, anyway, ladies, Clara. Jamie, whoever else is watching, if anybody else is watching. Um, yeah, I thought so too. I got a, got a speck on the sky. Oh well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time and uh, have a great weekend. Probably catch you on Lewis's streams too. So mwah. have a good weekend and week and life. And I'll see you next time. My, my pleasure. Thanks, G Max. Thank you for hanging out. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Bye.